and glad to see you. Um, we have a little bit of a different format this morning. We had some technical problems, uh, but that is not going to stop us. So we'll be back next week with a regular format that uh, all of you have gotten used to. <laughs> We're going to be talking about the debt limit deal. We're going to be talking about the uh, hiring, rehiring, a victory of a Starbucks, a, a worker. We're going to be talking about Eric was just went down south to New Orleans to the Congress convention, rather, of the con uh, <laughs> Coalition of Black Trade Union and CBTU. And he's fresh back. Uh, and uh, and then finally, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the folks who are not working on the railroad. You remember that song, <laughs> I've been working on the railroad all the day, all the day? Well, they fired a lot of workers, and they're making these long trains in order to boost profits, and it's creating a problem. And then if we have time, we have a mailbag question. So let's start with the uh, budget deal. Um, in order to placate or stop, I guess, the mega right from bankrupting the uh, country, a uh, deal was struck. Eric, was that a win-win or was it a lose-lose uh, proposition in your opinion? Oh, you're, you're muted, Eric. You're muted, Eric. Why don't you was tell it, it was a win. It was a it was not a win-win. It was a problematic solution to a created problem from the MAGA folks in the um in the Congress. The uh the debt um uh, lifting the uh debt limit was was agreed to based on cutting uh, programs that help the very, uh, the most needy in our, in our country. And that, that is unacceptable to me. Um, but I understand the, uh, you know, we wanted to keep the country um, from defaulting. And this was the, uh, this was the, the cost of that. But, uh, it's also a two-year deal, which means that the uh, uh, the next presidential race is extremely important if we want to uh, protect the programs that were threatened to be really cut, such as Medicare, Social Security, and true. if we want to protect from more cuts to true, uh, true. to programs. Yeah, very Thank very you. true. But Anita. The president is claiming a win, and the Speaker of the House, Mr. McCarty, who's, was it a win-win or a lose-lose? Or was it a win on one side and a lose on the other? I'm confused. Eric just confused me. <laughs> well, I think I think the Democrats did the best they uh, could with the situation. You know, the, the, the Republicans did win the House. They have some power. They threatened to do really damaging uh, things the 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 uh, measures they did uh, manage to pass will hurt brown and black women especially um, the as Eric said the the most uh, the neediest people um, and and the the and it's it's just stupid the uh, you know um, work requirements for another you know five years of uh, of, of folks uh, you know it's it's just um, it's not going to save any money from the, the deficit. So it's just all window uh, dressing on the part of McCarthy. But he wanted to keep his job and he'll keep his job for now. And uh, the Democrats didn't come out too badly in this, they're saying. So uh, it could have been way worse. Uh, but we just have to make sure we, you know, go to the ballot box in, in 24 and maybe change the the, the uh, balance of forces in the in the House of Representatives. Rosanna, 68 members of the Progressive Caucus in the U.S. House voted against that bill, including several heads of major 
congressional committees or ranking members like Jerry Nadler from New York, Nadia Vasquez from New York as well, um, your uh, congressperson from the northern part of the state, Barbara Lee, voted mm -hmm. against it. She's running for the Senate this uh, next year. Um, uh, if you had had a seat, which one day I hope you have, uh. representing Southern California, how would you have voted on that bill? Oh my gosh. <laughs> if I would have had a seat, that bill would not have even surfaced. <laughs> I think it would be much more about, you know, what's working people, <clears throat> the meeting the needs of the working people, not uh, who wants what on an individual basis. I think, you know, it's important to take note of who was willing to sacrifice the needs of the working people. And this is why voting matters, because is these people who are making these uh, outrageous <clears throat> bills and, and, and conditions for meeting the basic needs of people, which is, you know, a, a, a decent livelihood. I think it's important for the American people to take note of, of who was willing to sacrifice. In terms of voting for the bill, I I don't know. I was <laughs> I'm hoping I don't have to be sitting there either. But I I probably would have voted with Barbara Lee. I think she um she's a very sound uh member of Congress representing of the working people all around. So Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Scott, your homie says it's a win. McCarthy says it's a win. But that bill raises the age requirement for people receiving SNAP benefits. SNAP benefits, the food stamps from 49 to 55. And check this out, they were trying to save money that change is going to result in $2.6 billion more in administrative costs. I mean, um, and it enrages me to see all these millionaire talking heads talking about, oh, it was a good deal. It's not a good deal. It's not I mean, a good deal at all. Good it's deal a, for it, who? It's a win for uh, people who uh, are driven by just hatred of the poor and total subservience uh, to billionaires and big corporations and who want to, you know, squeeze, uh, you know, strangle the life out of any kind of social welfare program. It's a win for them. Um, not the win they wanted, maybe, but but a, but a win. It's a win for, you know, um, Democrats like like Joe Biden, who's you know, highest goal is, um, you know, some sort of a compromise bipartisan deal uh, who, you know, it's a win for people who who think that victory means, you know, sitting down and coming to an agreement where you can both shake hands at the end. It's not a win for working people. It's not a win for uh, for the poor. And I think it's it's going to end up, it's going to complicate the electoral struggle a, a good deal because it's not only that um, the deal's not good, it's it really doesn't look like Biden fought for a better deal. Um, you know, he said at the beginning, uh, I'm not going to negotiate. Um, and then he negotiated. Uh, and then he he said, yeah, the 14th Amendment, I do. I, I do have the, the president does have the power to solve this, but I'm not going to use that power. Uh, right. Too risky, whatever. Um, and, you know, I just read a really fascinating article uh, by a. Uh, historian pointing out that in 1933, um, Franklin uh, Delano Roosevelt uh, um, converted payment of uh, debts owed to banks from from gold into paper money, and basically uh, the banks took a huge hit, and the working people were protected. Um, he, he essentially repudiated a big section of. Uh, the public debt uh, owed to banks. So this is something that's possible. Um, and, you know, it's shameful that there wasn't more of a struggle uh, on the part of the administration uh, to do something better. But the difference between then and now is that there was the, a burgeoning 
mass social working class led movement, the CIO was being organized, the civil rights movement was getting his sea legs, uh, you know, and, and uh, there was pressure from below. And I didn't see all of that, you know, not to blame the working class, but we have got to build a movement in this country from the ground up to fight the ruling class power. Yeah, no, I totally that, agree. But it's still it was, shameful that, uh, that, that we have to do that. The pressure is going to be all the way from the right. And liberals always move to the right under pressure. Gus and them used to say that all the time, you know? Lenin said uh, it. So, um, okay, it is what it is. And uh, Biden's going to sign the bill and, and uh, the country won't default. But the least of these poor people, people, black folk, women, Latino, Asian, poor white, are going to be the ones who are going to suffer. And that's the crime, mm -hmm. you know? And if we don't stand for the least of these, but who the hell do we stand for? Who's going to be their voice? You know, I know a lot of people that that's going to affect. And it just makes me want to scream. All right, I ain't going to scream no more about this. <laughs> let's, let's move the uh, agenda. Eric, you went down south to... Uh, New Orleans to the uh, CBTU convention. Um, it was a militant. You, I read your wonderful article. You can go to peoplesworld.org and read Eric's article, Black Unionists Vow to Push for Racial Justice and Democracy. Um, and there was a, you told me it was a uplifting, maybe even life-changing event. Uh, what most struck you about that uh, meeting? What most struck me about the meeting was the emphasis on solidarity that was pervasive through the whole of the 1,400 plus people that were there. It was a celebration of struggle. It was a celebration of Black unity against the ultra-right particularly against the person that they called um, the Satan, who is the, uh, the unloved governor of Florida and against Trump. So uh, DeSantis um, was a focus because of his unrelenting attack on both black people and on organized labor. Um, and the uh, this feeling there was just a fighting feeling of we're going to get everybody out. We're going to be totally mobilized and we are going to defeat this bullshit that's coming from the ultra left I mean the ultra right. Um, the other side of it, though, was a real focus on the need for education in and for remembering the contributions of black people to the growth of the United States and to recognize that and to celebrate it because that is something that is under constant attack both through the book bannings, through the attack on uh, African-American um, history classes in colleges and on teaching African-American history as a component of US history in uh, undergraduate. Uh, kindergarten through 12. So um, that was another uh, another place of fight that, where they felt a strong uh, a strong um, contribution could be made by the coalition and its members to the education of Black people. It was wonderful. It was absolutely a wonderful event. Your article also spent a great deal of time talking about the Black, brown, unity and solidarity, and the issue of Senate Bill 1718 in Florida, 
mm -hmm. uh, that calls for, among other things, e-verify, where if you have a a, a uh, employer that that employs twenty or more workers, they have to give the list and turn over the names and and they're looking for undocumented workers, and that seemed to outrage the participants in the CBTU meeting as well, didn't it? Yeah, so this was um, a part of the response to, to uh, DeSantis. And it was very clear that um, they saw themselves aligned with a common struggle with black and brown folks.